Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm Nathan with the ebookreader.com. So, for this video, I've got the Kobo Ellipsa. It comes with this sleep cover and a stylus as part of the package. So, I wanted to show it first. Uh, the cover does add a lot of weight, but uh, it does have its uses, like it keeps the stylus. Uh, attached in the top and you can also bend it like that which actually makes it really comfortable to write when you're writing on a table because it uh, angles it up a little bit so uh, it does have its uses uh, you can actually pull this whole uh, front flap off and switch it to the other side if you wanted to use it left-handed mode so I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of the cover uh, the Kobo lips have just decided to update so we'll let it we'll show you the outside we got a power button USB-C port uh, it's got that flush front screen with a 10.3 inch card screen it has kind of a simple design with the uh, plastic based material. Um, it's not quite as heavy as some of the other Carta based 10.3 uh, inch models at 388 grams. It's got a little bit of a taper. It goes down to a little bit thinner on the left side. Uh, so it also comes with the stylus, has a button for highlighting and erasing, and you can replace the tips as well. Um, and then the back comes off and it has a quadruple A battery in there. So it's a little bit different. Some of the other Wacom touchscreens around that uh, don't require any battery power from the stylus. This one does. Uh, I do like the stylus. It has a good response and uh, it feels very close to the screen. Some devices have a larger gap between the screen and the actual ink. This one has a good feel. I'll show it a bit more later. Uh, so this model, it has a front light. It doesn't have the color adjusting front light like some of the other Kobos. It just has that cool color. So let's talk about the user interface here. Uh, this is Kobo's home screen. Uh, these lower elements will change from time to time. Then you've got your library view, which has different views and different sorting options. Uh, and then you've also got the different sections for uh, books, authors, series, and collections as well. You can use Calibre to create collections. You've got these different options uh, to view your library. You can view it in book cover mode or you can view it in the regular list mode. And then you can scroll up and down your list of books this way. You can also search for your books. And like I said, you have your author series tagging. Uh, you can use Calibre as well. If you wanted to create custom collections, you can create them on the device as well. A little bit time consuming, but it does work. Uh, you've also got the notebook section. Uh, this device, obviously, with the touchscreen and the uh, stylus adds notebook support. Uh, the Discover section is Kobo's name for the ebook store. You can go down here, uh, download ebooks from Kobo. It also has overdrive support built in, so you can get library ebooks without having to use a second device. Uh, some different features here in the beta features list, like you have a web browser at large print mode. And they have some games on this one. Some other Kobos have much li more limited selection when the beta features. This one has a lot. So on the top menu here, you've got some different options as well as far as your quick settings menu. You can access your energy settings from the uh, battery icon. The battery also shows your stylus status. And you've got sync, uh, notifications, search up here. And you got different uh, you know, parts of the interface you can search for if you wanted to search for books, a dictionary, stuff like that. Okay, let's go ahead and load up an ebook. This was a library loan, so it's going to be in Kobo's format. You can write on Kobo formats and EPUB ebooks. You also got the highlight. So uh, when you're using highlight on ebooks, it will snap to the line, unlike when you're using uh, PDFs and it's freehand highlighting. So this one does snap to the line, and those highlights will go to your other Kobo devices if you have them. You can also add text notes to your uh, notes and highlights, but any kind of like uh, handwritten notes and stuff like that, they're not going to be exportable. So that's one of the uh, limitations with Kobo software at this point. Uh, like I said, you got the button on the stylus you can use for erasing. Uh, and then all your annotations, uh, your notes, your highlights, bookmarks, anything you add to your books will get added to the list here. And then you can uh, organize them by different... Uh, you know different filters so if you just wanted to view bookmarks or if you just wanted to view markups you got that option like i said the this stuff isn't exportable unfortunately kobo doesn't have an option for that you can export your notebook notes can't export your ebook handwritten notes uh, another thing with the front light is you can adjust the front light level by swiping up and down the left side of the screen which is kind of nice on kobo's it makes it easier to adjust without having to go into the settings menu uh, up here on the settings uh, menu you also have the option to lock the rotation um, or you can switch to portrait and landscape mode. So the Kobo Ellipsa does support landscape mode and it will automatically rotate if you have the auto option engaged. Uh, so here's something that's kind of a bit interesting. So with Kobo eBooks, it doesn't do two column mode, but with EPUB eBooks, I switched over to EPUB right here, a different book. Uh, the EPUBs will actually do two column mode uh, when you're in landscape mode when you're using the smallest font size. So it only works when you're using the very smallest font size, however. Uh, I'm not sure why that initial circle disappeared. Uh, occasionally, I'll have an issue where like an annotation or a handwritten note will disappear. 
then when you turn pages, it'll it'll go away. But this now it's working. So I have encountered a few bugs with the note taking aspect, like I said. Um, but for the most part, it does seem to work pretty well. Like I said, though, you only get that two column mode with that smallest font size. Anytime you switch font sizes, it'll take away your handwritten notes, but it'll keep a little icon here. And if you tap it, it'll show you in the original view that you added that note. So uh, like I said, you've got the rotation sensor. It'll rotate to all four directions so you can easily switch to left handed. If you wanted to read left-handed um, and you can also lock it to portrait or landscape mode uh, you can't turn off the sensor entirely but you can lock it to one specific mode uh, this is a look at the advanced font adjustment menu in here you can adjust the font weight if you want to get your uh, text to be have a bolder look now this doesn't work with all the fonts but it does work with uh, these specific ones um, i think there's a patch where you can make it work with other fonts uh, and then you have the justification options on here. So this is an EPUB ebook, and what I find with Kobo, a lot of times regular EPUBs, these line spacing adjustments and stuff don't work because the book's got hardwired, hard written code in there that uh, overrides it. So you have to like use Caliber to uh, get EPUBs to work with the margin controls a lot and line spacing and stuff like that. But now we're back to a regular Kobo EPUB, um, and it will work better with these. And here's some of the other features. So you've got the dictionary lookup, uh, and then you can also access Wikipedia and Google from the dictionary window. So if you wanted to look something up, it will launch that uh, beta web browser. Uh, it works okay. You can control, control the font size. It doesn't have much features here, but you can uh, increase the font size. Uh, the stylus does not work with the web browser as far as like annotating or anything, but you can use it to scroll around. You can use it to uh, click on links. The browser flashes more than it probably should, but I mean, it is useful in some respects uh, you need to look up something quickly uh, back to kobo's ebook app here they have this uh you know estimated reading timer right here and then you can also like control what the what is shown on your header and footer as far as your estimated time and as your pages left in the book uh, and then you got some other features in here as well you can control the refresh frequency how often the full page re refresh to give that black flash uh, and then you've got the uh, orientation lock on here as well. Orientation settings, that is. Uh, dark mode is a new feature they added with the ellipsa. So I switched over to a PDF right here just because uh, sometimes it does invert the images. It's not supposed to invert images. It does work better than the old uh, you know, dark mode when it was an unofficial feature. Now that's an official feature. It definitely seems to refresh better, probably has something to do with the uh, Carter 1200 screen. But uh, when you're inverted like this, everything, obviously, you can still write notes and stuff, and it'll just be inverted. You can also do the highlighting as well, as you can see here. Uh, and then the interesting thing is, is then once you go back to regular mode, it will invert your highlights and your any notes that you added on the screen, and will go back to normal as well. So you can do all that stuff while using dark mode as well. So it's not just limited to you know, regular mode. So let's go back to an ebook. As you can see right there, the interface wasn't inverted. So other things aren't inverted, like the, uh, you know, dictionary. If you launch the web browser, none of this stuff is going to be inverted. It just comes, uh, it just works with your ebooks. Like PDS is not going to work with obviously the notebook app either. So this is a quick look at the basic notebooks. So they have basic notebooks and advanced notebooks. Uh, the basic notebook, uh, you have the regular writing features and you have uh, you got like what do we got? We got five different pens, uh, well four of them, and then you got one's the highlighter, uh, and then you've got some different styles. So basically, what these do is they have different pressure sensitivity, it's a little bit different line style. So uh, the stylus it will like the line will be darker if you press down harder, it'll be thicker. Uh, so it does have the pressure sensitivity. You can adjust the background. I find it odd that the background by default is the graph paper, which I don't know seems kind of strange. But you only have four page backgrounds. There's no way to add any more. So it is quite a bit more limited than like an Onyx device where you can add your own backgrounds. Um, so you do have the different erasing options. You can do the fine tune erasing where it's just uh, you can erase anywhere. Or you have the stroke eraser which will erase full strokes. Uh, and then you've also got the different shades for the stylus. So you've got the different line thicknesses and different shades. So you can kind of customize your writing experience here. Um, so this is, like I said, this is the basic notebook. These are all available on the advanced notebook as well. You just have some different features with the advanced notebook. So, I mean, the writing responsiveness is good. It's similar to any other Wacom tablet. Uh, all these e-readers seem to have the same similar, 
you know, feel. Uh, this one has a heavy texture on the screen, which does give it a bit more of a paper-like feel. I do like that. Uh, you do have the undo, redo as well with those arrows back there. Uh, you can export uh, individual pages or entire notebooks. And then when it comes to exporting, you have the option to export to your computer or you can export to Dropbox. So the Ellipsa does support doc Dropbox for file transfer. Uh, and you can transfer uh, ebooks that way as well. So this is a quick look at the advanced notebook. I'm not going to have time to show it very much. Um, I might do a full video just to show this because you've got a lot of features here. So you can do text conversion with tapping. Advanced notebooks always use a lined page. And then you have these different insert options. So you can just write on the screen, then double tap to, to convert the text. Then you have these different options. So you can insert different if you wanted to insert a picture, if you wanted to insert math equations, it has all these different uh, like gestures that support. So like I said, it would take a full video to show the advanced notebook features. So I'm just going to keep this short because the video is already running long. I just wanted to kind of give you guys a general idea of all the features on the Kobo Ellipsa. So I mean, it's not nearly as advanced when it comes to the like notebook features and the PDF features you can't export. Like I said, you can't export annotations at all with PDFs and eBooks. So that's definitely a bigger limitation than when it comes to like Onyx devices. Uh, but I really do like the larger screen. Finally, it's nice to see Kobo finally release a device with a 10.3-inch screen. It's really, uh, you know, good for larger form content, PDFs and comics. It can be nice for as well as just, uh, you know, the notebook features. I think the notebook features are good, but not great uh, compared to some of the other devices on the market. Uh, but, you know, I do like the larger screen. The price is reasonable considering it comes with a cover and a stylus uh, and i do like kobo's ebook app a lot better than the ones you get on android devices so i mean it just kind of comes down to what you're looking for in a reading device uh, i'm going to go ahead and wrap up this review check out the ebookreader.com for the full written review i also have a separate pdf review uploaded if you want to see that uh, thank you guys for watching bye